Hi there. Wow. Massive news. A day after HBO announced that production has officially started on House of the Dragon, photos leaked out of Matt Smith and Emma Darcy in full costume as Daemon and Rhaenyra Targaryen, filming on a beach in Cornwall, England. We have our first photos of them in full costume. They're not high-res official publicity photos, but they're still really good. They leaked out in the Daily Telegraph. Starting with Matt Smith, he looks pretty imposing in a Targaryen silver wig. I talked about this in my casting analysis video for him, that if you keep thinking of him as just Doctor Who, he's taken on roles in the past seven years where he had to really bulk up and do a lot of bodybuilding. That he is really ripped now, very muscular. If you saw him in The Crown, he's really he's jacked now. And I hate how people just keep going, oh, he doesn't look like Daemon. When you're not even thinking of his body, you're thinking of, oh, just his face, or he's got black hair. <laughs> I understand that, you know, I realize they know there's going to be a wig, but it really changes a person's whole appearance, so they're in the full wig and everything. I mean, Amelia Clark, when you look at the behind-the-scenes photos of the physical transformation she had to go through in not just the wig, but the makeup to get it all to fit together. You know, she's got dark hair in real life that she has to wear this massive wig to turn into Daenerys. That I kept saying, you know, for some people who just oh, I can't wrap my head around Matt Smith. Is this, this looked better than I thought he'd look. And I was already on board with it. That he really looks like Daemon. This particularly the one where he's looking to the side and his face looks very angular and Valyrian. That they're, they have sharp features. Delicate features like that. So th this is even better than I thought he'd look. But the really impressive part from these leaked photos is Emma Darcy in full costume as Rhaenyra. I want to talk about this in two parts. First, just the actor with the makeup and everything, and then specifically the costuming, regardless of the actor they put into it. it even more than Matt Smith, you know, he's a more famous actor, but when it came to discussing Rhaenyra, a lot of people couldn't really get a feel for Emma Darcy as a Targaryen, because... Emma has had short hair for the past few years for other roles, and in, like, the profile pic they put out, it was the most recent thing they had. And it wasn't in full costume. And I've been talking about this in my over-an-hour-long Rainier uh, casting analysis video I put out just a few days ago. Please check that out if you haven't already, where I go through every aspect of this in a lot of detail with photos and everything. And I spent a chunk of that saying, guys... Wigs and makeup are a physical transformation. Don't judge until you've seen Emma in full costume. That they kept going, oh, this person in, 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 in short hair. Even the photo of the table read they put out yesterday, Emma still has short hair in real life, which is probably better when you're wearing a full fake wig than trying to stuff long hair into it, I guess. But when you, I'm putting on the screen now, it's night and day between... Emma out of costume, and Emma in the full costume, and, and the wig apparatus, and the makeup, and everything. This really works. I'm just giddy with this. If this is clicking in my head. If this is closer to what I hoped it would look like once we have the full costume makeup set up. But that's very specifically the headshots and how the wig and makeup pull it all together. Now I want to move on to talking about the costuming they chose, regardless of who's in it that whatever actor they put in it, this costume blew me away. I mean, because this is exactly how Rhaenyra's clothing is described in the books. It was just, I recognized it when I looked at it. If you, I don't know if, you know if you haven't read this, you're not sure, if you're impressed by it or not, that this is what specific descriptions of her clothing are like in the books that official artwork is based on. And it's all the more impressive because, well, the prequel novellas are only outlines, that Fire and Blood is a collection of prequel novellas. They're in-universe history books. They're not narrativized the way A Song of Ice and Fire was, so unlike 
we have some descriptions for Cersei's clothing or Marjorie's clothing in the Song of Ice and Fire novels. We really don't when it comes to most characters who are going to be in House of the Dragon. That I can't mentally picture what Alice in Hightower's dress looks like, you know, other than that it's green. It, we really don't have a description. But because Rhaenyra was royalty, years ago, like 20 years ago, George R. R. Martin himself was giving instructions to an artist for official artwork of the whole Targaryen dynasty. All these portraits of the whole dynasty from Aegon I through the Mad King through Daenerys. And all of these have been prominently posted on Westeros.org's Wiki of Ice and Fire for over a decade, so you can check them all out. It's on the Rhaenyra page if you go there as part of the series. Well, I said straight from the books. It's straight from the mouth of Martin. For over a decade, he said, well, this is what this character looks like if you wanted to look it up. So we all have a pretty good sense of what Rhaenyra looked like and how she dressed. And let me quote it off. This is Martin's description given almost 20 years ago. Well, this is what Rhaenyra looked like. He said, quote, Rhaenyra had the silver gold hair of the Targaryens, which she wore long and braided in the manner of Aegon I's warrior wife, Visenya, one long braid worn down the shoulder, though Rhaenyra was no warrior herself. She always dressed richly, favoring purple and maroon velvets and golden mirish lace in intricate patterns. Her bodice often glistened with pearls and diamonds, and there were always rings on her fingers. When she was anxious, she would turn them compulsively, round and round. And the new costume designer, Janie Tamim, who, I have a whole video on her, uh, she did Harry Potter, James Bond series, she did a couple of big movies besides that too, she followed this description very closely. Uh, you can tell she was using that as a guide when making this. This is directly based on Martin's description, which, you know, makes sense because it's the one detailed costume description Martin gave for this entire prequel era. So going over each aspect, um, the thing that stands out first is, yes, they've got the single large hair braid that goes down one of her shoulders. This is a basic detail they needed to get right. I was worried they'd skip it. That if you draw a silhouette of the character or simplified cartoon version, I mean, the animated histories and lore special they did on The Dance of the Dragons even kept this detail, that it shows her with a big braid of hair resting on one shoulder. I hope people won't confuse this too much with Daenerys's braids, because those were specifically her copying Dothraki braids. That's a specific character thing, but Daenerys isn't the only character with braided hair in this show. I, I don't like how some people are going, oh, it looks like the way Daenerys did it. Well, Cersei and the entire royal court had a lot of braided hair in season one, Daenerys isn't the only person in the world to have braided hair, but it, it, it is nice that it looks reminds some people of warrior braids, that you know you can't get them stuck while you're riding your dragon or something if you just had hair that wasn't braided like that. So they got the hair braid right. That's great. Second point, the colors. Yeah, it just I'm, I'm going down the list here. Dear God, yeah, they're purple and maroon, just like Martin said. And maybe some black in there that, you know, they do mention her faction are called the Blacks because she likes wearing black dresses a lot. But I think it's the, the underclothes are maroon. I'm not an expert on this, but the the la layers below that and the leaked photos are fuzzy. So I'm not sure on the specifics that I can't tell from this resolution. But looking at the sheen of the fabric, I think it is velvet. I think that is maroon velvet, just like Martin described. And third point, while I think the main body is velvet, zooming in, I'm very sure that there's this huge swath of delicate lace embroidery going down the front and coming to a point behind the neck. As in, quote, golden mirish lace in intricate patterns just like Martin said. You know, I actually think this may be the first time we actually see mirish lace in live action. 
if you haven't read the novels, one of the big fashion details we're given in, for this world, and we're not given that many, is that intricate fine lace is one of the big exports from the free city of Mir, one of the nine free cities. And it's imported to Westeros and highly prized by the upper nobility. It's a sign that you are a somebody, that you're not just, oh, I'm a major vassal, like great houses, you know, the really wealthy people wear Mirish lace. It is a symbol of that. Cersei wears a lot of it, for example. And the weird thing is, I'm not sure if we ever saw lace as such in Game of Thrones. It was more focused on intricate embroidery, not that there's anything wrong with that. It, but at any rate, even if there was, if you could point to lace on a costume or something, even if it was there, I was kind of disappointed that given the background depth and the world building of the books, I was disappointed that in eight seasons, no one ever mentioned the term mirish lace on screen. Because it comes, if you've read the books, it comes up fairly regularly. And there was fine mirish lace. It's like a drinking game. And if they mention mirish lace again. Uh, you know, much the same way. It's repeated a lot. Much the same way that in the TV show they'd repeat fine Dornish red wine and Arbor Gold. It, it's mentioned, you know, as rich stuff prized by aristocrats when they're rattling off a list of that. But in the TV show, they'll mention Dornish wine, but never Mirish lace. I'm not sure why. Possibly because we went five years without a female writer. I don't know, but it's weird that you'd mention one of the rich things, but not one of the other things. That In any fictional world, just a, a detail that, oh, that's something very popular that rich people have. And I don't even think, I'm, I'm not a fashion plate or something, I really don't know that much about costuming. I'm saying for world building in the sense of like, um, if you're writing a pirate character and you're saying, ah, we made off with treasure chests full of gold, that's kind of generic. But you want to say, ah, oh, we made off with chests full of gold and barrels full of expensive Dornish red wine. That's a little more detail. Well, in the books, he'll rattle off, ah, uh, the pirates raided our, our shipping lanes and they made off with chests full of Dornish red wine cinnamon spices, and fine mirish lace. You know, as a generic list of expensive stuff, like if you're raiding somewhere, or to show that's what the queen is eating and drinking and wearing. So, I look forward to this, mark my words. It'll be cool if someone in House of the Dragon actually mentions the term mirish lace in dialogue. <laughs> I've been waiting for that, just because it's... it's you mentioned the wine, but not the clothing. It's it's weird. It's just another term they could be throwing around. I mean, these are leak photos at very low resolution, so you can't actually make it out, but you can kind of tell. It's whetting my appetite that this must be very delicate lace work. When I'm squinting at it, trying to figure out what it looks like, I really look forward to a full publicity photo of this. High res. Because you can tell this is the hero costumes worn by one of the two faction leaders. They probably went all out on this with very intricate lace work. And yes, there is clearly a lot of mirish lace as befitting a royal princess, directly as Martin described Rhaenyra's clothes. Fourth point is jewelry. Yes, if you zoom in, I grin when I see the rings on her fingers. I mean, if you pay attention, most aristocrats, male or female, in Game of Thrones wear rings on their fingers with expensive gemstones, often more than one. So, you know, this isn't special in and of itself, but from that description, I'm picturing Emma Darcy in this, anxiously fiddling around with and twisting the rings, because that's how they're described. But on the subject of jewelry... It's clear, even from these fuzzy leaked photos, that Rhaenyra has earrings, which is huge. But why is that? Because no one in the Game of Thrones TV series had earrings. I mean, I'm a guy, so I don't notice that as much. I only realized this after the show had ended, but no one has earrings. If you watch my channel, please tell me if you remember this. This is back from summer 2019. 
when I was doing filming reports on that ultimately failed pilot for the Long Night prequel. That I was doing reports on the Blood Moon, they called it prequel. And I'm trying to pick apart every detail because we have nothing else to go on. So I'm picking apart costuming details, and I realized, wait a minute, a lot of these characters have earrings. And then I went back and checked, no one in Game of Thrones had earrings. So this was a very different approach to it. I mean, I didn't notice. It's one of those things that you only realize going back. And, but once you see it, you can't unsee it. Go back and check. Cersei never wears earrings. Marjorie Tyrell or, or Sansa Stark, no one has earrings, even among the female aristocrats. And if you think, oh, they're trying to save that for exotic things, even like Ilaria Sand and Dornish characters don't have earrings. Or Slaver's Bay and Karth, which have all sorts of exotic piercings and jewelry in the books. In the books, uh, Zarazon Daxos has, like, gemstones studded in his nose and stuff. No, like, Karth, Slaver's Bay, Dorn, even they don't have earrings. And Or the Dothraki, and I check the Free Cities, no one. It's like literally one background prostitute in one episode in, like, Volantis, I think because they just forgot to tell the actress to take them out. But that isn't even a look for Volantis as a whole. Like, all the other women in Volantis didn't do that. So it isn't a look for a particular setting, culture, or location. People just never had earrings in the TV show. Do people have earrings in the A Song of Ice and Fire novels? Interesting question. Well, do people wear earrings in the books? I said in the previous long night video report that I used e-search tools for the word earring, and that word is never used in the books. And I knew, and I mentioned then, that there's like one or two times, I think it's three characters that they mention who are male characters who have a gemstone stud in one ear. Like, Ramsay Snow wears, like, like, a garnet in one ear sometimes, or one Dornish character who has, has a gemstone of jade in his ear. But that isn't really an earring, that's a stud, and even then, like, most mainstream men, or even most people in Dorne or the Iron Islands or Wildlings or whatever, you really didn't hear that many people described as doing that. Even in other continents, you'd think you'd hear more about that in the other continents. They really don't. You, you hear about nose piercings and stuff for people in Karth like Zaro, but otherwise not. So in my original report, I said earrings don't exist in the books as a thing as such, the way we have, you know, like standard classic Western jewelry. But as I was discussing this on Twitter in the days leading up to this video report, Fans pointed out to me one big quote, that Sansa Stark herself actually is described as wearing earrings at her wedding to Tyrion. The exact quote is, moonstones hung from her ears and about her neck. You see how we missed that, that it didn't use the word earrings, so it didn't come up in an electronic search. And it's literally one mention in the entire really long novel series. I guess maybe because George R. R. Martin is also a guy, uh, he doesn't go into that much detail about jewelry. But then again, he goes into detail on things like necklaces and jeweled hairnets a lot. So there's other points where he does describe jewelry in, in fairly accurate detail. So I don't know why he doesn't mention earrings a lot. Maybe you know, just because he's a guy. And others have pointed out to me that officially commissioned artwork, which Martin gave the go-ahead on, portraits for female characters like Cersei have earrings in them, and Martin must have approved of them. That If he was actively enforcing a no earrings rule, he would have noticed that long ago. So I think it's just he didn't get around to describing it that much in, in a lot of detail. Like the whole thing where he said... I actually didn't make up rules for their chess game because I'm not a chess player that you don't make up really good song lyrics if you're not a singer yourself. You just describe that character as a really good singer rather than you don't know how to make up lyrics. He says, I'm an author. I'm not a lyricist. 
So maybe just because he doesn't know jewelry that well, he didn't describe it that much. But regardless, any scenario, there is no anti-earring rule in, in the books. So this is a quirk of their culture they don't have. No, either way, the fact that Sansa Stark herself, a mainstream aristocrat, wears earrings, that she apparently has pierced ears, and wears earrings to her big wedding to Tyrion in King's Landing, you know, well, in front of the whole royal court, Sansa Stark having earrings at her wedding to Tyrion really indicates that earrings are actually commonplace for female aristocrats in Westeros. This is something that mainstream society does among noble women. And this isn't even like a fringe region. Again, it's not wildlings with with bones stuck in their ears. It's not, oh, that exotic Dornish character. It's people at the royal court in King's Landing, you would see them wearing jewel earrings. This is in the books. I have no idea why the TV show dropped this. Maybe just because they weren't explicitly described as having earrings in the first book, because Sansa's marriage is in the third book, Maybe they didn't think to put them in, but just because he doesn't describe them doesn't mean they're not there. By that logic, we saw a lot of characters wearing jeweled rings on their fingers that Martin didn't explicitly describe them as wearing, as just they're aristocrats, they, they wear expensive stuff. Did the costumers think to ask Martin? Did they think it was distracting from their faces? I No, no, they wear other jewelry. That's the weirdest thing, and this is one of the things I would ask Michelle Clapton if I ever got the chance. Why don't people wear earrings? Even at things like Marjorie's wedding to Joffrey, the big royal wedding and stuff, it is very strange. And it's not as if Clapton doesn't like inventing jewelry. She makes up all sorts of really expensive jewelry as necklaces, or as hairnets, or as embellishments that are metal pieces on the dresses. Why weren't there earrings? And the strangest thing is when you look at side-by-side -side photos of these actors in other period dramas, like medieval dramas, I keep thinking of Natalie Dormer as Anne Boleyn in The Tudors. She had all sorts of fancy earrings as part of her royal jewelry. Then suddenly, a few years later, she came to Game of Thrones. She's playing this another prominent female aristocrat, very wealthy, but Marjorie Tyrell has no earrings, even at her wedding. Why? So I don't know why they took that out. It might have just been a mistake they kept running with. Regardless, even if there was some sort of no earrings rule for Game of Thrones, here now, why is Rhaenyra clearly wearing earrings in these spy photos for House of the Dragon? Rhaenyra has earrings now. Well, first off, there's an entirely new costuming department led by Jenny Tamim, though they said they're trying to more or less match the visual style of the Game of Thrones series, just different fashion styles in a different time period, but they want it to feel like it's part of that world. So Tamim looked at what Clapton did and was trying to fit the texture of it, the visual feel of it, more or less. This is one of the things I would ask Jenny Tamim if she ever accepted Q&A for something. Why are people suddenly wearing earrings now? Was this a conscious decision, or you put it in because you're a normal person and no one ever told you not to? That Did someone tell Clapton not to put earrings in so she assumed they wouldn't? I think most people if you're doing a medieval drama with, you know, like, kings and queens and aristocrats, most people would assume the queen wore earrings. Like, medieval queens and aristocrats wore earrings. This, this was a thing in the Middle Ages. It's not unusual to have women wearing earrings in that time period, so I have no idea why Clapton assumed they didn't or maybe was told they wouldn't. Maybe Tamim just assumed they did because she's a normal person. I don't know that did Tamim even realize this is a slight change from the visual style of the original series. Ultimately, though, that, that's just background, maybe. I think the primary reason? I think the main reason Rhaenyra has earrings now was actually due to practicality. You see, in real life, 
Emma Darcy actually has very large ear piercings double piercings in both ears, and wears very wide earrings most of the time. To the point that if Emma took them out, they couldn't just conceal it with makeup. Like, when the other actresses who have pierced ears, like Natalie Dormer, you can't see that there's a piercing in her ears when she's Marjorie, they cover it up with makeup concealer. Or Maisie Williams. Maisie Williams has a nose piercing. Maisie the actor, Arya the character doesn't because they just smooth it out with concealer. This happens on a lot of shows, you know, period dramas where that character doesn't have pierced ears, they conceal it. But Emma's ear piercings are so large and prominent that there'd be a noticeable gap if they weren't there. I mean, not quite, but almost like if you took out ear gauge plugs. You know, when you see people, you know, like rock stars and stuff who take out their ear plugs, and there's just a hole there that. Emma has very wide earrings in real life that you couldn't cover this up with makeup concealer. It would have been impossible to enforce a no earrings rule, if such a rule exists. Thus, they sort of had to work with it by giving Rainier earrings. Again, question I would ask the costuming department of, did you do that because of Emma? The practical necessity of Emma's heavily pierced ears kind of forcing your hand. Yeah, I'm fine with that, though, no, particularly because on checking the books, yeah, women really are supposed to have earrings in this universe. I didn't know that. Now I'm even more mad that Game of Thrones didn't, simply as another book inaccuracy. I mean, I'd see other period dramas like The Tudors and stuff, and they'd have these really expensive jewel-encrusted earrings. And I'd be looking at it and going, why don't we have nice things? You know, why did they have all this nice jewelry in the Tudors that they're not having jewel earrings and stuff in Game of Thrones? And I'm even more upset now that it was actually supposed to be there. The question, though, going forward is, will this just be a one-shot thing that only Rhaenyra does because of Emma Darcy? Because it would be weird if Rhaenyra is literally the only person in Westeros with earrings. You know... It would be kind of interesting if they work this into the rival fashions that are worn by Rhaenyra's faction versus Alicent's faction, the Blacks and the Greens. What if Rhaenyra's faction wears earrings, but Alicent's faction doesn't? We haven't seen spy photos of Olivia Cook in full costume yet as Alicent. Or what if they do have earrings, but they're a noticeably different style? You know, like, what if... Rhaenyra has really big earrings, and Alicent has relatively small ones, or more than one small one. You know, different ways of playing, well, they're earrings, but they're in a different style to mark them off as, I'm one of the greens versus one of the blacks, Rhaenyra's faction. They can play around with that. It just It'll be so interesting when we get a, a first look at how Alicent dresses, just to compare and contrast with that with Rhaenyra. Because it's that whole, they call it the trickle-down principle, which even happens in the books. They said, Rhaenyra's followers started dressing like her, and Alicent's followers started dressing in her style. The same way that, like, Lannister followers at court dress in the same style that Cersei does. That Tyrell loyalists dress like Marjorie. And I have all, all sorts of other videos on this talking about how the style changes between the two. And just, it'll be like a uniform, almost, seeing how they dress differently, might even use different jewelry patterns. Of maybe some will favor heavy necklaces while the other faction doesn't. Yeah, what if Rhaenyra's faction likes earrings more than necklaces and Alicent is the other way around? I'm not really sure, but, you know, I'm a guy. I don't really pay attention to this that much. I only even realized for Game of Thrones after the show ended... It's kind of weird that all these medieval queens and aristocrats like Marjorie don't wear earrings, ever, when she did in the Tudors, and it turns out, you know, Sansa has earrings in the books. So, yeah, you had to zoom in. I can't really see uh, Radier's earrings too clearly in this, but I'm going to keep track of that as we get more pictures of other cast members of how are the fashions at court playing out through that. Uh, closing out here, switching over to Matt Smith briefly. His costume, you know, it's, it's a lot more functional in this specific scene. Maybe he wears something more ornate in another scene. So there's not as much to go over here. 
I will point out that they actually didn't copy the style that Daenerys' brother Viserys III had in season one. When people go, oh, this reminds me of Viserys, if you actually look at a side-by-side -side picture, they're really not the same. The, Michelle Clapton explained that her idea with Viserys was that he was wearing the old Targaryen style, what people wore at the royal court before the Targaryens were overthrown. So it had things like peaked shoulders and a kimono-like asymmetric cut to the front. But House of the Dragon is set almost 200 years before Game of Thrones, and while medieval fashion moved slower, I don't think fashions would extend that far back, that there would be one fashion that was at the Mad King's court extending back 200 years. They wouldn't be exactly the same, no. Uh, for any of the Seven Kingdoms, for that matter. It, well, what Matt Smith is wearing here seems more like, I, I just like this, the generic nobleman outfit that we saw men at the royal court wearing under King Robert. But then again, the Tyrell men also dressed like that, with this symmetric cut to the front and slightly peaked shoulders. The Lannister style, what Jamie wore most of the time, was an asymmetric cut without peak shoulders and these really wide turned down lapels. And the, Tywin was weird though, that at points Tywin would dress in the same style as Jaime with that asymmetric cut, but they weren't consistent about it, that at other times he'd switch to King's Landing style with the symmetric cut, but no peak shoulders. I have no idea of why was Tywin's clothing shifting between episodes like that, between styles. Again, this is one of the things I actually hope to ask Michelle Clapton about, which we probably will never get to due to NDAs. Just, you know, background detail on, she published a lot more of her thoughts on what went into the female costumes, whereas, well, why are the men dressed like that? She really didn't go into that much detail on in various interviews, you know, because people always ask about the exciting costumes like Marjorie's wedding dress, something as mundane as, why is Tywin wearing a different jacket than in that other episode? Doesn't come up in interviews that much, but when you're writing an encyclopedia entry or something, of, you know, why is their costume a little different, the different styles? So, Daemon is just wearing a generic southern Westeros nobleman cut in this. He's not really dressed like Viserys, though he does have peaked shoulders, and I am intrigued that, again, fuzzy resolution, if you zoom in, I'm pretty sure that he actually has intricate embroidery on it. That that thing they did with Daenerys, where they explain this, we have this diagonal, it's diamond-shaped embroidery that makes the cloth look like dragon scales, which is always really impressive. But I, I think it's actually a really detailed tunic, but I, I can't tell from this resolution. And on the subject of the old Targaryen court style, well, Contrasting the differences between Viserys' Targaryen tunic and Jaime's Lannister-style tunic, the Lannister style, like I said, had the collar and lapels folded down, while the Targaryen style has this very high collar folded up. And we kind of get a sense from Viserys of what the old Targaryen style was like for men, but we really never had an official visualization of what was the old Targaryen style like for women? I mean, specifically, we never got a flashback showing what Daenerys' mother, Queen Rhaella, dressed like. What was her style at court? We never, we never really got that. So, when we look at Rhaenyra's dress, we never really had a female template for Targaryen style before that. Well, what we saw Daenerys wearing in Season 7 was closer to what Viserys was doing. You could tell she was imitating what Viserys used to wear when he was, you know, in Westeros. That she had an asymmetric cut, that she had a cape, a little cape off of one shoulder, but that was Daenerys imitating Viserys. I mean, hundreds of years in the future, if the, if the only knowledge of Tyrell-style people had was Marjorie's dresses... Could you extrapolate from that how her father and brother dressed? Not exactly. They're not always just a slightly feminized version of it. They're actually relatively different. Uh, Cersei and Jaime, well, they're both asymmetric cuts, but other than that, 
the whole lapel thing with men just doesn't apply to the female version of that. So Daenerys would logically wouldn't know what her mother dressed like. She's just making a, a basically a, a female cut of what Viserys was wearing when she never really saw what a Targaryen dress for a woman looked like. If you follow my meaning here, that she's just reverse engineering it from what Viserys did rather than knowing what a Targaryen woman would dress like. So basically, we're seeing for the first time in this, okay, this is what a Targaryen-style female dress would be like. And it's not exactly the royal court style under the Mad King. Even so, this is an entirely new style. We don't have anything really comparable to this before. And I'm in love with it. Because it matches George R. R. Martin's description so well. But keeping in mind that thing of, well, okay, the Lannisters, the lapel was down on Viserys, the collar and lapels were up. Uh, th this is something we haven't really seen like this before, that it's not a collar, that Rhaenyra's dress has these lapels that fold out, probably to be reminiscent of a cobra. <laughs> They've done this before where they go, we work in reptile elements into their costumes, you know, because the whole dragon motif. Uh, it'll be interesting to see when Tamim gives a full interview describing the thoughts that went into this, but that widening collar like that, we haven't really seen women wearing something like that in Game of Thrones. But I'm in love with this. I can't wait for the costume designer's thoughts in an interview going, these are the things it's supposed to contrast with what other people are wearing. I mean, imagine how they're differentiating Allison's dress in reaction to how Rhaenyra dresses, that Allison will dress the opposite of this, but what does that mean exactly? The mind boggles, for now. Hopefully we'll get more spy photos soon. So just, wow. We've already got leaked photos of Rhaenyra and Daemon in full costume. Matt Smith, Emma Darcy. Just a day after they announced production began, and they're showing us a photo of the first table read. That worried me for a few hours, because I, I thought, oh no, has filming not started yet? Are they still in pre-production? Because, I, you know, they tell us stuff weeks after they've done it, but it, that table read was probably weeks ago, because I was worried we had heard that filming would start the week after Easter. And then when we didn't have spy reports, I was worried, you know, from a table read, oh no, are they just starting to read it now? No, spy photos of them doing a scene on a beach... They've officially started filming, and this will go on through the summer. As to where they're filming, uh, there were scattered reports about this. I didn't want to make a video until we had total confirmation, which we just did because they were there. They are filming on location in England, in Cornwall, the southwest tip of England, which is really cool because we're pretty sure they're filming Driftmark there, and Driftmark is this big maritime center, and similarly, Cornwall was historically a big maritime center for England, and there's all these ancient ruins and castles there. But I've already spent a lot of time talking about the character designs on this, the costuming. So I'm going to split that off into a separate video, talking about all the spy photos we got, not of the characters, but of the sets and Valarian sigils and the filming reports we're getting out of Cornwall. So please like and subscribe so you can keep getting updated on all the news that's coming out on literally a daily basis now. That stuff is coming out faster than I'm able to easily report on it. We're going to be getting spy photos daily basis now. We're entering a really active reporting phase. I'm going to follow up on this with a summary of all the set reports we have so far.